Welcome everybody, this is the 3D Printer Chat Show, the podcast about 3D printing and I'm here today with John Acosto and he formally went by the name 3D Print Nerd. How are you doing John? I'm doing well and you? I'm doing excellent. I'm uh, full of coffee and I've been playing with an Ultimaker 3 so I'm <laughs> on nerd heaven <laughs> right now. Um, so tell me about your, your name change. You, you used to be 3D Print Nerd and now you're what uh coolnerd.co um coolnerd was my company before i uh started on 3dprintnerd.com um and it was mostly e-commerce uh but i always kept the name because i loved it um so you know 3d printing you know it's fun it's exciting but it's a very limiting and and my world is beyond 3d printing so I wanted to create a, a comparison shopping engine that was more appealing to just technology versus just 3D printing. So I merged uh, Cool Nerd and 3D Printer into one major comparison shopping engine uh, where we're focusing on just uh, Internet of Things, uh, DIY projects, alternative energy, um, networking, gaming, and obviously 3D printing, which is, is still the bulk of the database. Um, I have over 16,000 listings just on 3D printing and just a little over 6,000 listings on non 3D printed related um, items. Cool. So, this is, is this your day job? This is your main. Oh, no. My day job is um, I do business consulting uh, for a day job. Um, as for my, uh, I have another side project where I, I develop an e-commerce platform for just 3D printing. Um, it's, it's Let's say you're a, you have a 3D hub like what's going on right now with the uh, whole scandal um, and you want to go independent. Um, my platform allows you to offer instant quotes and checkout and that's through fames.co. Is that the WordPress plugin? Uh, yeah, and we're actually in the middle of... Um, we're almost finished with the multi-platform, so we'll be able to offer more than just WordPress. We'll, you can just put it on your Shopify account, on um, website, or on um, Wix, or any uh, site that accepts on um, JavaScript. Cool. A lot of uh, 3D printing filament companies and parts companies, they use Shopify a lot, don't they? Yeah, they do. Uh, I, th I think... Uh, um, Printed Solid uses Shopify, and I know that um, Protopasta uses Shopify, and um, I know my friend uh, um, Printed Industries, they use the Shopify platform, and it's, it's mostly because they it allows businesses to, you know, it's like an all-in-one tool, you know, you can manage your marketing, your analytics, etc. Yeah, like a turnkey. It, it, yeah, it's very turnkey, seamless. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been in business for almost 20 years online, and I can tell you, you know, starting an online shop 20 years ago versus now, it's it's a lot easier than it was 20 years ago. Oh yeah, tell me about it. I had to build some sites, some e-commerce sites using classic ASP. You remember that? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, uh, my day job is uh, also in the WordPress space. So I'm a big fan of WordPress and WooCommerce. So that is. Um, you having a WordPress plugin is a delight to my ears. So that's, uh, I'm still a big fan of that side of things. But I know Shopify allows people to get up and running very quickly. And uh, it's it's actually, as a customer, it's a nice user experience as well, which is really important. The bi Well, the biggest problem with WordPress, and I've noticed this, um, it's all the damn plugins and and it's, you know, you have a plugin for this and a plugin for that. And then one plugin causes an interference on another plugin, then you have to modify. And uh, and I think that's why Shopify is so uh, uh, popular in terms of the world of e-commerce because, you know, you don't have those problems. Yeah. Uh, we actually do hosting and we develop themes. I work with studiopress.com. Oh, nice. So uh, I do the marketing for, for that. And one of the reasons we do our own hosting is because of those challenges that people have. You know, the, they either crash the site and get a white screen or it slows right down. And when you're relying on sales, it's even more important that your site's always working and it's uh, 
fix. So I can completely understand why people would go to something like Shopify and being able to have your platform on top of that would allow them to uh, enhance that experience. So you allow people to sell 3D prints, it's, so like custom print on demand almost. Uh, yeah, it's 3D printing on demand. So if you have a, a 3D model you found on Thingiverse that you got permission to, uh, you know, to 3D print for commercial purposes. Um, and I state this in a very careful wording because of the entire, you know, what happened with just 3D print as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, with our merchants, we try to uh, encourage them to make sure that the files are legit. But, um, you know, what my platform does on, on the WordPress platform right now is, you know, you can upload the file, uh, an STL file right now, uh, and then offer an instant quote. And then you can just check out, uh, your customers can check out with Stripe, Amazon, Square, uh, and or PayPal. Um, and it's fairly uh, seamless. We, I put a lot of work in it, uh, especially in the last year where, um, you know, in the beginning it was just a simple quotation tool with checkout options. And we added shipping and we added coupon codes and uh, we added some other features to um, you know to accommodate various sellers because you know some our quotation also does density versus most other quotation tools just do um, volume um, we also added preset filament materials and you know we always try to add some more but lately we've been working on the multi-platform and uh, and that multi-platform, you know, once it's live and once it's on a hundred percent, it's gonna change the game, I believe. Cool. So when it goes uh, multi-platform, it'll just be some script that you paste into your site, right? Uh, and you'll have an entire panel. And since we, you know, since we spent almost the last year on uh, catering to just the WordPress crowd, there will be a WordPress uh, integration. Uh, where it will just, uh, you don't have to put the JavaScript onto the page. You'll just, uh, you know, um, put in your API code and uh, you'll be able to manage everything through your WordPress uh, through an API connection to our server. But the biggest problem with WordPress, and you already know this, is, you know, ser shared hosting um, puts a lot of PHP restriction. Yeah. And, um, and my plugin platform uses a lot of PHP power. And, uh, and what we notice is um, in the WordPress platform, especially in shared hosting, is it causes a lot, a lot of PHP errors. And, um, and also, you know, when you upload a file, some STL files, let's say you want to, um, your customer wants to 3D print a, a head of group, um, you know, those files can be 50 to 60 megabytes in size. And most, most um, PHP uh, upload and postmax limits are limited to, you know, uh, depending on your server, uh, on your hosting provider, uh, it could be from eight megabytes to 16 megabytes. And, uh, you know, and if you're, if you have a big project and the person's trying to upload for an instant quote, you know, if your max size is 16 and that's all the hosting provider wants to give you, you know, you're basically, you know, out of luck yeah. uh, for that business. So, um, We've taught a lot of the um, a lot of the merchants that we have right now uh, on how to increase their PHP max limits if their hosting providers provide. And in some cases, I've provided um, hosting myself uh, just so they can get up and running. Um, but this this platform, everything will be done through Amazon AD, AWS Cloud. Cool. So. You know, it'll be fairly simple and fairly quickly. Um, I remember a few, what was it, two weeks ago? Um, I don't know if you watch um, Jatman. Yes. And he was uh, showing a demonstration on 3D Hubs where um, he was uploading a fairly, I'll say, 30 megabyte file. And it took forever to load. And it, it made me wonder if, if 3D Hubs was even using a cloud service to process that data. Because, mm. um, you know, when you're processing volume or even den – well, density is just mostly if you have the, um, the, the density material of that filament that the customer wants. But whenever you're processing STL data or even uh, OBJ on data, 
it, it takes a lot of processing power and it took a good almost 30 seconds which was astonishing to me yeah that 3d had this type of problem and that's and, uh, potentially a lost customer you know who's got yeah. the patience for that yeah we've got the patience to wait 30 seconds to even a minute yeah uh, one the, of the things the that we've uh, talked about in my day job quite a lot is uh, a thing called digital sharecropping and that's where you're overly reliant on a service like 3d hubs or you know in the social media world youtube facebook and where they change the rules on you or the service goes down or goes out of business and then your entire business is you know it's the wheels come off because yeah. they're in control so having your own ability your own platform is really important you can use 3d hubs as a sales tool a marketing tool but get people onto your own platform then you've got control you can manage your experience and again, the the book stops with you, so you know the, there is some responsibility with that as well. But it means you you have a business instead of uh, running on somebody else's platform. Well, in my almost twenty years of doing online business, um, I can tell you this much: uh, you know, most of the guys that are at three D Hubs, they um, you know they may not have marketing sense. Or they just want that seamless um, marketing done for them. Like uh, that's why eBay and Amazon are so popular for uh, small merchants because they do all the marketing for them, and they're willing to pay the 13 to 15 percent. And a lot of them don't have either the knowledge or the patience to try to build their own brand. They want a turnkey solution, um, yeah. and and that's um, and that's also. Uh, an issue because when you're relying on someone else's platform, uh, what you're ending up doing is you're, you know, you're basically their slave um, without offending people nowadays because you can't say certain words without offending everyone now. Um, but the the fact of the matter is, you know, when you know you have make X Y Z, I think you have um, you know, aside from 3D hubs, I'm I'm trying to remember the other one, but. Um, the fact of the matter is you're relying on their platform and, it, and your success is relying on their success, really. Yeah, but and, people are uh, investing in print farms with the expectation that their money from 3D hubs is going to grow and grow and grow or at least stay static. And then they're finding out that they're actually sending the customers elsewhere and then they've got all this investment, they've got all this overhead and it's not being paid for. So what I've been trying to get across to people is at least have a customer list, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much start building your own marketing. I mean, Amazon uh, forbids it uh, for you to uh, basically take the emails of customers that you got from Amazon and to build your own marketing list. They actually will uh, ban you from selling on Amazon if they catch you doing that. Uh, and I think all of the other uh, platform marketplace platforms do that uh, to discourage because they basically want you relying on them. But um, it, it is one tactic, um, you know, and it's not so much of um, building that list. It's so much of if you're building your own platform, per se, and, you know, you have to spend at least, you know, a good amount of money to get your get your brand out there. And it's all about brand building. If you're just doing dom um, domestic fulfillment in your own city local, um you know, then you have to, you know, go to the uh, to the maker shops and the and the fab labs and uh, try to get people there as well because you know sometimes their machines may not be the machine that needs to do that print properly. Uh, it, it's a lot of elbow grease. I remember uh, Printed Solid um, told me that he got his customer base just by answering technical questions on forums. And he spent two years doing this, and that's how he built his brand, by just helping people. Um, yeah, and that's you know, not so spamming, by the way. <laughs> that's not people pasting their 3D Hubs link into th threads the whole time, because we've seen people do that as well. Yeah, and, and the, the fact is, well, in, in, the world, in the world of 3D Hubs, you know, if you're going to a 3D printing site, a forum, and you're pasting your link on it, what are the chances of someone on that site uh, are going to actually need your services? Very little, because most of those people already have their own printers 
or they know someone that can do that more complicated work for them. Uh, so, you know, it's all about knowing your demographic and uh, finding your niche. Uh, and, you know, I spent two years doing marketing in college and I can tell you it's all about the niche and especially social media marketing. It's all about the niche. So, you know, tools like Instagram, uh, tools like Twitter, tools like Flickr, um, Flickr is a very popular um, tool, even though everyone overlooks it. Um, um, and Pinterest, uh, post your 3D prints there. You know, show them the quality of your work, and you also have to use the right hashtags to ensure that okay, well, I need to do some three. Um, I need some 3D printing services. I want to look at uh, who who can do the best job for me. And, you know, most of these people nowadays, they're looking at Instagram, they're looking at Pinterest, they're looking at Flipboard, they're looking at Flickr. And, and you know, even photographers, non-3D printing related, they're, they're using um, all of these image-centric social media platforms to get clients. They're posting all their photography. And in the world of 3D printing, it's nothing different. Because I post things on 3D printing on Instagram all the time. And, um, you know, I have a small base there, but you know, on a good day, you can have 15 to 20 likes. And as long as you're persistent and as long as you're posting every day, um, at least once a day during a prime hour, which, you know, on, I'll say in the East Coast is between 12 to 5 p.m. Eastern, um, you know, you can, you can build a brand. You just have to have the patience and you need to at least, you know, put some elbow grease on it. Yeah. It, Nothing is turnkey in life. You know, the only thing in turnkey in life is taxes and debt. Yeah. But like you say, it is about niches. Like I uh, printed, well, started printing a motorbike part yesterday. That's what you have to look at. I mean, everybody looks at cosplay or just general 3D printing and Yoda heads and uh, Groot. But who needs 3D printing? It's people doing either replacement parts or prototypes, right? Yeah. It- Prototypes, replacement parts, uh, cosplay is another big thing. Um, you know, um, Chris Muckett, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, um, he travels all around the country um, going to comic book conventions and uh, make affairs, um, promoting his 3D prints, and that's how he makes a living. Uh, so it's, you know, you just have to find your niche. You did a lot of research into AdWords advertising. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, um, no, AdWords, I've, you know, I've played with it since the beginning. Uh, and I always learned that, um, you know, in the beginning, you know, click per um, CPC, uh, I'm having brain farts today, <laughs> um, CPC bidding, you know, the idea is the higher you bid, the, the chances your, uh, your listing will be higher in the search engine results. And, um, and, the, and the problem with CPC bidding is uh, if you're trying to target, uh, let's say, for instance, 3D printing, uh, if you just put 3D printing as your keyword, uh, you know, that's a very broad term. So if you're, ju- if you're just offering, let's say, uh, 3D printing services, uh, 3D printing on demand, and you just put 3D printing as your keyword expecting to get clients, guess what? You're just going to get a lot of people just clicking on your site, and they're going to be like, oh, this is not what I'm looking for, and getting the hell out. And it's all about finding that niche, uh, finding the, those right keywords, and uh, finding that demographic. It's all about demographics in, in marketing. When it, when it comes down to marketing, it's all about demographics. So if you don't know who you're looking for, and you're not getting sales, well, guess what? That's because you don't know what the hell you're doing. And, uh, and you know, before you go in and jump into the ocean, you got to learn how to swim. So, you know, you have to know who, what you're looking for. If you're looking for, uh, you know, right now, it, most for 3D printing on demand, uh, most people either look for prototype design and, and fulfillment, um, rapid prototyping. So those, are, those are the keywords that, most people that are looking for, you know, jobs like 3D um, for your 3D printing on demand, they're looking for those keywords. So those are the keywords that you have to use. You can't just use broad keywords and expect success unless you have a broad product. Um, and with AdWords, 
you know, back to their CP scene is sometimes if let's say if it's a dollar per click uh, to get good results, try 50 cents. So sometimes try 25 cents. It doesn't as you know, the, the fact of, you know, trying to figure out the best way to grab as many people as pop uh, as possible without um without hurting your budget is sometimes you have to hurt your budget at least in the beginning just to figure out which is the best um bid rate to get the best optimal users also you don't want to advertise 24 hours a day on google because someone looking for something at 12 in the morning uh, may not be as uh, interested as someone looking during the afternoon uh, so, you know, you have to look at the best times to advertise your site as well. And it's a lot of marketing research and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of people who write on um, blogs about the best ways to market, but the only one that knows the best option is you because, you know, what worked for one person is not going to work for you. Yeah. And you've got to use those negative, um, settings as well. Like, don't be advertising to people you can't even ship to <laughs> or uh, right. bill. and don't be advertising to people who are looking for stuff for free because if they're looking for free 3d printing services you don't want to be charged for them to click through on your ads because that's just a waste of money right and then in your case and also in the cases of local 3d printing uh, on-demand companies you know uh, you know if you're if you could only fulfill in let's say New York, you know, don't advertise in California if you can't fulfill that order. Uh, yeah. So you know that it's all about like er everything else is all about demographics. And in fact, in New York, you'd probably be better off targeting specific boroughs, right? Uh, yeah. If I mean, I'm originally from New York, and I can tell you this. I can um, tell from the accent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, the, in in Google AdWords, not just in New York, you can do zip code advertising. So you're, if, let's say someone in 104559, which is the zip code of where I grew up at, um, if, if, you, if I just want to advertise in 10459, you know, Google only show those ads to people in that specific zip code. So you can be very, um, you can narrow it down to the zip code or the postal code in other countries because I've seen it. I've seen it in other countries and like in the UK where you can uh, just target that postal code. Yeah. But you could then say Hell's Kitchen 3D printing service. Right. And, uh, but the thing is, if you're only offering to that specific zip code per se, uh, let's say in, in New York, each zip code, I would say, has about 50 to 100,000 people on average and uh, um, residents. Now, in zip codes where, where it's in Manhattan, uh, you know, where most people are working, um, either, either in Manhattan or downtown Brooklyn or Queens, um, wh what you have is you have people from the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, Staten Island, or even in the suburbs in Manhattan at that time. So if you're offering, uh, let's say, 3D printing and you're only in, uh, let's say, in Bushwick, Brooklyn, which is a, a section in Brooklyn, um, real nice, good pizza. Hmm. Uh, uh, you know, if someone's from Bushwick looking for Bushwick um, 3D printing service somewhere local, uh, and you're you're working in Manhattan, guess what? If you just target that zip code, on um, what's going to happen is you're you're screwing yourself because that person's not in the zip code right now. He's you know he or she is in Manhattan. What? Well, so it's all about that specific keyword. You know, if you have to use let's say Bushwick as a keyword. Um, you know, and someone types Bush 3D printing, you'll pop up wherever you're at. So you, you have to be very specific in your keywords as well. Yeah, and in your appeal, it's like you said before, you have to try different things. So you might say, you know, same day delivery or, you know, find a way to appeal to those people, even though you're not just around the corner. Right. Uh, like right uh, in New York, San Francisco and Chicago, um, you have, um, Uber has a service called Uber rush, which is similar to Postmates. I don't know if you've heard of them and what they do is, um, it's delivery on demand and you hire someone to pick up that object, um, that you want delivered, you know, within the, within the next hour. And, uh, and that's another niche service that you can offer. 
uh, offering things that they deliver without you actually delivering it, just using Uber Rush uh, or Postmates. Um, Uber Uber Rush is right now limited in in just the three cities I mentioned, but you know it's all about finding that niche as well. Yeah. So you've built a product that appeals to people who are selling the 3D printing services. Do you think? Well, obviously, you think there's some legs in this, uh, that there's a growth opportunity, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't have invested in developing your platform. Um, I'll tell you this much. Uh, sometimes I just do things just to do it, uh, whether I succeed or not. I'd rather do something that I'm passionate about and fail and never doing it at all. Um, so if it never makes me money, it doesn't make me money, but at least I did something that I wanted to do passionately. Um, money's never been, um, well, money was in, in my early twenties, a, a major motivator, you know, growing up in New York, it was all about the money. But as I've grown older, um, I haven't really cared much about making money so much as just following my pursuits. It's something where, you know, if I die today, you know, I'd rather die knowing I've done something that's made me happy versus making me very, very rich. I mean, I, um, you know, I'm not going to deny a million dollars, but I'm not, you know, that's not the ultimate goal. You know, if I if I travel the world, I've already traveled all over the place. Um, you know, that's all I really care about. It's just um, fulfilling my passions. Yeah. So, but uh, as for the platform itself, yeah, um, it will be nice if, uh, you know, if I get, let's say, a thousand users right now, um, you know, we have just a little under 100, but a little over 50 uh, use, active users right now on the WordPress platform. And, uh, you know, and I'm just focusing on that and I'm just focusing on improving that product, uh, whether it's profitable or not, um, because at the end of the day, you know, as long as I'm doing something that I like, something that uh, makes me happy, that's all I care about. And is it profitable for your users? Are they managing to sell their 3D prints? Uh, the, I, don't, I haven't asked my, my merchants whether they're profitable or not, but uh, I, I know I do have a merchant uh, who's um, fairly busy and uh, it's made his life a lot easier. Uh, you know, I, I speak to about five or ten of, about five or six, not ten, I'm exaggerating on ten, about five or six, realistically, on a regular basis on, you know, they're always giving me input on what they'll like. And, uh, or, if, you know, some, many of them have shared hosting solutions and, uh, and they're always having minor problems because, you know, uh, WordPress did a major upgrade and now we have to go and uh, see what, what's causing yeah. the new problem. But, um, but yeah, they, I mean, they're, I mean, I'm getting sales. Uh, that means it's, you know, it, there is a demand for it. Um, but the fact is I, I did a demographic. I based it on the number of 3d hubs that are there and they, they estimated, um, as of a few months ago that they had about 6,000 hubs. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I figure realistically, um, of those 6,000 hubs, 10% of them are actual professional, uh, companies. So that's 600. Yeah. And that's worldwide. So if I get a hundred, uh, of the, of the 600, then I have a, uh, what, 15, 17%, uh, um, market share of that professional um, fulfillment piece. Now for the, uh, for the remaining 5,400 that are just either amateurs looking to make a few bucks or think that, you know, this is what they want to do, but it's not their full-time gig. Uh, you know, those guys, those are the ones that we have to convince uh, to want to become independent of you know, marketplaces like 3D Hubs. And that's the biggest hurdle. And that's a, a marketing campaign. But the thing is, I can't go and uh, uh, approach 5,400 people and tell them, hey, you know, uh, try my free platform at least and see if it works. They have to want to do it and they have to be ready. But well, that's why um, you're sponsoring the um, Jackman, right? Um, I sponsored Jatman because I'm a, you know, I've known Dustin for a long time, uh, for a few years and uh, we always spit 
3D printing talk and gossip. And, uh, and I'm always giving him some insights on how he should direct his, um, his um, broadcast. And, you know, whether he does it or not, that's up to him. He, he's very independent. He's very opinionated. Um, and I respect his opinion. Uh, and I hope he respects mine in, in return. Um, but I sponsor him because, you know, aside from just brand building, um, maybe one day one of them will want to buy the platform or uh, subscribe. Uh, I support it just because, you know, he's doing, you know, a service to the community. And uh, whether it's profitable or not, you know, time will tell, but uh, that's not my main driver right now for for Fane's 3DP. Yeah, so uh, you're going to sponsor 3D Printer Chat podcast now, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to look at your demographics first. <laughs> well, it's all people in the 3D printing industry, and I know that much. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, well, 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 Hakan's site uh, is mostly consumer-based, uh, so, you know, if I, maybe I can use, um, once I finish up revamping coolner.co, we can uh, do talk about sponsorship, but not right now. Okay. So what's <laughs> next for you as well as the multi-platform? Uh, you've got anything else in any other irons in the fire? Um, just revamping coolner.co and uh, getting that multi-platform out of the way. Um, you know, I don't want to show too much right now uh, okay. especially with faints 3dp because um there's a lot of development in the work and uh you know i, I have a i'm a firm believer uh spies are all around us <laughs> okay so you'll have to come back on when you've got some news oh most definitely cool well thank you for your time it's um, been about uh, 30 minutes so I, i'd like to uh, let you go so i don't take too much of your time thank you for coming on Oh, no problem. Have a good day. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Please do subscribe, like us, comment us, share us, and look out for the next episode. Thanks, everybody.